Good afternoon, YouTube. So this was the Takagi H3M DV-N tankless water heater that I installed this spring. So in one of the videos, I showed how I installed the remote control for the unit, and I installed that inside the house in the kitchen. This is, an, of course, an indoor unit. I have it installed in my garage. The indoor units of this heater come with a built-in control here on the front panel, and this is called the TM-RE41. And the remote that I installed in the kitchen is a TM-RE42. Anyway, the reason for this video is one of my viewers asked if it were possible to take this controller off of here and mount it remotely. So initially I thought, oh, that probably wouldn't work because this is probably built in, wired into the unit and very difficult to uh, relocate. This is the wiring diagram out of the service manual that you can download from the Takagi website. And right here it says indoor model only temperature controller. There's two wires, a connector, and two wires that go over to a little terminal block here. And the remote controller wires up to those same two terminal connections. So the, the built-in or front panel remote is wired in parallel with the actual remote. So that says that this remote is basically the same as the official remote. So on the outdoor models of this heater you don't get a built-in remote because this is not weather resistant or waterproof. But what they do is you get a front cover for the outdoor unit that doesn't have this cutout here. And then the outdoor model has vent holes here for the intake air. And then up on the top, it's got an exhaust vent. But anyway, let's pull the front panel off and take a look at that. And right here is your front panel controller. And you can see, just like the wiring diagram shows, you've got two wires and a connector there. So most likely, you could just take out these two screws here and remote mount this someplace. Now the only problem you would encounter if you did that is you're going to have a hole in the front of your heater here. But you could probably put a panel or a piece of plastic or a piece of metal or something across there. Maybe get a piece of sheet metal and just attach it to this gasket material. Yeah, so that is correct. So here's your cable from the built-in controllers. These are the two wires here, and then these are the two wires that I added for the RE42 units. And then, like I did, I just ran my wires out of the bottom. Here's the hole for the power cable, and I just ran through that same grommet, and then my wires just run up beside, and then I go up in the attic and drop down into my kitchen area. But yeah, if you want to save yourself purchasing a separate controller, you could just take this one off of the front. You're going to have to extend that wire somehow. So yeah, it looks like that, that would definitely work. You could actually save yourself $50 to $100 if you need a remote or you want to remote mount the controller. Just take it off of here, extend your wires off to wherever you want to put the display. So let's see, put this back on here. Yeah, you would just have to figure out something to uh, fill in that hole in the front panel. But let's see here, this shouldn't... Yeah, see, I can't turn the unit on here. I can't turn it on, but let me go inside and I'll turn it on from the inside remote. That is now on. But you can see here, I can, I can cycle through the, the display readings. So it's telling me my incoming water temperature is 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Like these functions don't work. I can't change the temperature and I can't turn the unit on or off. 
but I can display parameters. So apparently with a remote attached, this front panel is disabled. But if you don't have a remote, then you could take this unit and relocate it someplace. So yeah, you can get yourself a free remote if you don't need the display on the unit itself. Thought that question was interesting enough that it warranted a video response. And yes, you can take this off and put it someplace else. All it takes is two wires here. Yeah, so it says here that the error code is displayed on the computer board of the water heater or the remote controller or the temperature controller. So I think this is called the temperature controller and then the remote unit is the remote controller. So I guess the error codes are displayed on this. So yeah, looks like it'd be pretty easy to take this temperature controller and move it up to a couple hundred feet away from the heater. So you could put this in a, say, a bathroom or like I have it in my kitchen where it's kind of in the center of the house. This has been working really well. Uh, let's see, it's now March, so I've had it about 10 months and it's worked just fine, no problems. I've not had any error codes. Worked through the winter with the colder water. Didn't have any problems with not getting enough hot water. It heats water. <laughs> I guess that's about all you can say about it. Looks like it's almost the same as the remote controller, just it seems like the remote controller takes priority over the temperature controller if you have both, but if you only have this one, it does all the functions. And it has the same, just a simple two-wire interface. So just right there, that's my two wires, a little bit of bell wire. You can pick that up at pretty much any hardware store. It's the same stuff you use on a thermostat or a doorbell, any sort of low voltage, low power application. I think this is like 18 gauge. So yeah, if you have any questions, post up in the comment section down below. I'll put some of the other tankless water heater videos over here on the side. And as always, thanks for watching.